All right, so last week we explained how we built this jig, so this sort of mock-up of the roof of our bus, because our bus is out getting painted now in Mexico, and we knew that building this would be kind of a challenge. So the reason it's a challenge is we have relatively large solar panels. So they are um, SunPower E20 435 watt solar panels. So they're considerably larger than most panels. They're about 81 and a half inches uh, long by about 41 and a half inches wide. So they're relatively large. All right, so we're interrupting our video because we realized there was a few things that we hadn't explained. Um, the first of which is why are we using these huge panels? They're much larger than what typically most RVers use, which are 100 to 200 watt panels. And a lot of that reason has to do with energy density. So with these panels at 435 watts each, we can get a much higher energy density, meaning we can have much more power output per the same amount of square footage with these panels than we could with those other panels as far as much as 33 percent so we could have just put panels where we found spots all along the top of the rv we have three vents on top and we thought those three vents would be pretty essential because our ac is mounted way at the front and the bathroom and the rear room don't really have, you know, the air has to flow all the way back there. So our thought was we could use these vents to pull the air sort of through the coach. Um, that was one of the thoughts. Also, as we're chasing nicer weather, it may just be a nicer option to have the vents open and use that instead of using the air conditioner all the time. Um, we do have a very large battery. So we have a Nissan Leaf. It's about 24 kilowatt hour battery that we want to keep charged. So we wanted to have as much energy input as we could. And we did a few mock-ups with smaller panels and the biggest we could really get up there was 17 to maybe 2000 watts if we're really pushing, putting panels absolutely everywhere we could. Um, with this configuration, we're getting more like 3500. So that's quite a bit more for the challenge that it is though, it, I mean, not to undersize what we're trying to take on here, we are definitely taking on a, a fairly large challenge in trying to double essentially our square footage while folding it back in to drive. And so um, we thought it might be worth the challenge just to see if we could do it and just, you know, we are going to live in this thing full time. Everything inside the coach is electric with the exception of the hot water heater. So we couldn't find a hot water heater that we thought would be suitable for a family of six. Um, the only thing we really thought that would work well is a uh, tankless propane hot water heater. And so we're probably going to go that direction. That isn't even 100% decided yet, but that is the way we're strongly leaning. So. With our large battery, we wanted to have a large solar array and the way to get the most amount of power is to use the most energy dense panels that we could find. Another benefit is that these panels are highly efficient, whereas most 100 to 200 watt panels are in the 15-ish percent efficiency range, 15, 18 on the ones that advertise very high efficiency. These are known to be over 20% efficient. Um, not only that, but they have internal circuitry and um, diodes and things that minimize the effect of shading. So if you know anything about solar, you know that shading is like the number one enemy. And that was another thing where if we mounted them flat, now we have to worry about, well, if our, if our vents are up or even if they're not up, they sit, you know, five and a half inches off the roof, they're going to probably shade some of the panels and that's gonna be kind of a big deal. Another nice thing about these panels is their voltage. They are very high voltage but low amperage and so they run at 85 to 86 volts but only at like six amps and so when we tie four of them in series we're still getting the full 
3,500 watts. Um, so we're gonna tie two in series and then four in parallel for a total of eight panels. And it's going to be 160 volts right around, 160, 165 volts at only like 25 to 28 amps. So the amperage is pretty low. That means we can use smaller wire, there's less heat, there's less loss due to the high current. So there's a multitude of reasons why we've decided to go with these. And we're not afraid to fail. We'll be the first to admit if it doesn't work, we try something else. So that's one of the reasons we went with the Super Strut. We showed that on the last video, but we didn't really explain anything about it. Um, the base for our system is going to be a super, uh, the Super Strut across probably a 27 foot or 28 foot span where we can mount these brackets pretty much anywhere we need to mount them. So if this doesn't work out and we're like, hey, we, we couldn't figure it out, we couldn't make it safe, we, it's just we need to abandon that idea. There's a good possibility that we could sell these panels probably for what we paid for them, if not more, and we can get smaller panels and reconfigure them to work with this same Super Strut. So I think we're pretty comfortable in the decision to go with the Super Strut. Um, the big unknown is, are we gonna be able to do it? So in this video, we're tackling the lower layer and um, We'll see how that goes. So, um, as we had mentioned, we were originally going to orient them the other way, but we've decided to orient them um, long ways with the bus. So that presents several challenges because our bus is about 35 feet long, but the area that we have to sort of lay all this stuff in where it's relatively flat because the bus kind of steps up and then it tilters back on the back is about 20 about 28, 29 feet is the most we're able to get out of you know where we can mount stuff. So we decided to use uh, this Unistrut stuff to kind of flatten everything out and make sure we have a level, secure mounting point to start building everything off of. So last week we talked about how we're gonna do a dual layered approach. So we'll have a bottom level and a top level. And so today we will be working on the lower level only. So we'll be working on how are we gonna get a panel secured to this uh, strut bar as well as be able to slide out. So that's the problem we're gonna be solving today. All right, so in order to accomplish that, um, we've purchased some of these sliders. So these are big sliders um, and they, you know, they're gonna help us to create the slide outs. These are supposed to be rated to 400 pounds. Um, I'm not sure that these can handle 400 pounds, but anyway, that's what they're rated for. Um, our panels weigh about 54 pounds, so we thought a couple of these we should be safe um, to, to use. So we've got that, um, we've got a couple aluminum pieces that we're playing with. Um, we had originally mocked up the entire thing using this type of aluminum um, angle. And what we found was this just wasn't strong enough um, long ways. So we'd have to make it significantly thicker. So this is an eighth of an inch. We'd probably have to go up to something like a quarter of an inch. And once you go past an eighth of an inch with aluminum into quarter of an inch and thicker, um, the price goes way up. It goes way through the roof. So um, we're going to use probably iron across a lot of the frame and then maybe use this aluminum, since we've already bought it, we already bought a whole bunch of it, um, use this for the sliders. Because um, in a 40, this is a 44 inch piece and in a 44 inch piece it makes a lot of sense because it's plenty strong and we're going to double up on this. So this should be plenty strong to hold um, one of the panel sliders. So as far as what we're going to use to actually mount these to the rail, we've got these, um, these are standard um, two hole or four hole L brackets. Um, and that we've mounted down with with uh, grade eight hardware, and then we're gonna we're thinking about using this is three sixteenth inch plate, and this is a one eighth inch angle. And what we're thinking about doing is, what we'll do is we'll take out the the um, the curve with the way we mount these in here, so we can get these to mount. Um, 
flat by taking out the angle with how we bolt these in. So that's our initial, that's what we're thinking of using for now. We're gonna go ahead and try to mock one of these up and, um, and see if we can get this to work. All right, so we've cut our pieces now, and this is how it's going to work. So this one will slide, so this will be down here, and this will slide across like this. So these two pieces of aluminum will kind of make a Z shape, and the panel will sit on top of here. This will be bolted to a little stand that we make. So now, we've come over here, and we've positioned our rail and clamped it to our piece of aluminum, we're just using a piece of aluminum as a as a um, as a spacer to center this rail on here. So now we're going to go through and mark all the little holes, drill some holes, and put some hardware in them. All right, we've already had a change of plans. <laughs> so we were gonna do it like this, to where it was kind of like a Z, and then we thought that might put too much pressure, so what we're doing is we're gonna ride them like this. So they'll ride like this. So with that change of plans, now we've gone through and we've started marking, so we're gonna mark this. Um, fortunately, these sliders, this other slider comes out and allows us access. Uh, into the thing, so hopefully we'll be able to, to uh, mark this up and, and get it to slide in. All right, so one side is done, so this is how they'll slide out. So it seems like it's pretty smooth. Um, so the panel will be sitting on top of here, and it should be strong enough to hold this. All right, so we'll figure out how to, we'll build another one, and then we're gonna figure out how to mount them on a stand um, off of these posts. All right, so we've mocked this up with a piece of plywood. So this plywood is 40, about 42 pounds. Um, our panels are, I think, 54 pounds. So it's not, these are a little bit lighter than our panels will be. So the problem we're having is they seem to be drooping quite a bit. So when we measure here, we get about 22 and three quarter inches. And then when we take it out, what we noticed is they slide pretty smooth until about there where they start binding a little bit. So it starts binding a little bit and then it will go all the way out, but you'll notice how kind of floppy it is. Um, also, if we take a measurement, at the end now, we're at 21 and 3 quarters. So, um, it seems to be drooping down. Um, these are supposed to be rated for 400 pounds, but they were only like... I think they were like $60. So I'm gonna say these are probably extremely overrated. So this is, like I said, 42 pounds, and it doesn't feel like it's gonna be able to hold. There's certainly some wind and all that coming through here. I don't think these will hold up. So I think we're gonna try to order some heavier duty slides. So this is the reason we mock things up and we test things out. All right, so last time when we had tested these, um, they were starting to bind as soon as we got kind of to the very end of the range of motion. Out of curiosity, 
we unloaded everything and decided to test if these things sagged with nothing on them at all. So what we found out is yes, they do. They sag by about three quarters of an inch. So that's the difference between when they're up here and then at full extension, what the, and that may be something to do with the floor. Anyway, the difference is three quarters of an inch. When we pulled the last ones out, they were off by over an inch and then they were starting to bind. So we thought maybe we'd buy some stronger slides or maybe try something else. Well, what we've decided to do is now we have three slides in here. So we have three slides now supporting this piece of wood and it has essentially eliminated the binding. So there it's at full extension, there is no binding. So I think we've taken care of the binding and then when we check the sag on this, it is three quarters of an inch, exactly the same as when it's all the way, in, uh, when it has no load on it at all. So I think we've solved that issue. So we've bought, what we've done is bought another set of sliders that were exactly the same, the same sliders that we had before. Like I said, they're rated at 400 pounds. Um, they're probably a little overrated. We went back and read some of the reviews and the manufacturer said, you know, at full extension, um, they should be rated for a little bit over 200, something like 225 or something like that. Um, I think even that's a little generous, but we're putting 50 pounds on it. So <laughs> hopefully there's enough. So there, there it's at full extension and it's not binding at all. So as you can see, it's nice and smooth. And um, so I think we've gotten rid of the binding issue. So the next thing we're gonna tackle is trying to get these sliders elevated um, we need about six inches to clear our uh, vents. So we have vents on the roof and uh, we need six inches to clear those. So we're gonna make some stands um, that bolt to these rails that will lift this platform so that, it's six, uh, so that it sits six inches up. So that's what we'll be tackling next. All right, so these are the brackets that we chose to build to raise the panel up the required six inches. So we know that our sliders are about two and a quarter inches tall. So we need another three and a half inches out of this to be able to bring them up to the six inches. And so since we're using these L brackets here on our rail, um, we know that these are about 11 degrees kind of tilted to the outside. So we take that 11 degrees out with these holes. And so when we set these up and we line them up with our holes, um, it gives us a platform for the sliders to sit on. Um, this is six inches here and then there'll be six inches on the other side and then the rest of the weight will be taken up by the aluminum. Um, so we will have to put some kind of barrier between this steel and that aluminum to kind of alleviate the dissimilar metal uh, corrosion. So we'll have to take care of that as well. But when we bolt these in, now we see that we can get this, um, we can get this perfectly level um, just by where we drilled these holes. So again, this raises it three and a half inches. Then we've got two, and a quarter inches, I'm sorry, it's three and three quarter inches, then two and a quarter inches up here should get us the full six inches off of the top of the roof. So that should clear our little vents. So another thing is um, when these slide out, so when they slide out, it should give us even more room for the vents to be able to pop up. So this will initially just clear them and then when they're out of the way, there should be enough room for us to be able to elevate those vents um, almost all the way up. So if not all the way up. 
So that's the plan. And these are the brackets we created to alleviate that problem. All right, so we've mocked up our final assembly. So these are six inches off of the roof now um, with the, these brackets that we've shown you that we made. So it raises this whole structure six inches up. And so now we should have panels that slide on here. So if we get our panel, and this is just our mock panel for now, um, we'll see that this will fit kind of like that. And then it'll, you know, I'm having trouble doing all three slides, but it'll just slide out kind of like that. So anyway, we're going to try it with the real panel. Okay, so this is the actual solar panel on our things. Now we've just got them clamped, so they're not super secure yet, but they're enough to give it some rigidity. So it should come out to about here or so. And there it's pretty, it's pretty solid there. The other panel um, would be right about, Right about there so so that's where the other panel would go um, it would be a little higher so it would be a little higher than this one since this one rolled out from underneath it um, but that's about the setup we're looking at right there um, so the side of the bus would curve somewhere down here so this will hang over the side of the bus so this is what it looks like so far, and at this length, if we're not fully extended, it is, it's pretty solid. Um, it's only clamped onto the bars as well. We haven't, we haven't bolted anything down yet, so they're just clamped on there also. So, um, so we'll see. Um, but it feels pretty solid for now. Maybe we'll work on the second layer see what that looks like but this is how they would roll in this is when you're ready to travel they're in and then there'll be another layer on top here that would sit there so anyway that's what we're thinking We'll, uh, we'll see how the rest of the build goes.